What's up? Welcome back everybody to another video. This one's special because I just bought my first fixer upper here in the Bay Area and I'm so excited to show it to you, give you a full tour of this house as well as the scope of work and tell you everything that we're going to be doing and show you the entire process until we put it back on the market, hopefully in five or so months. So this house is a corner lot here in the Bay Area. We are walking distance to a top rated elementary school and a top rated uh, middle school so this makes this area a prime prime location there's going to be tons of work that needs to be done landscaping which we haven't fully designed the landscaping yet but it's going to be something that's obviously cost effective maybe concrete i'm not a big fan of mulch but it's something that we'll look into probably some grass on this side but let me take you around here it's a four bedroom home it's two baths and currently sitting at 1500 square foot but what made this property so appealing is that there's a large basement space or garage space, excuse me, that can be converted to enlarge in the house and create a lot more additional value, which I'll show you. So this property split level, very long corner lot and about 5,000 square foot lots. So you can see back there, um, there's the backyard, which I'll show you in a bit, but let me take you inside and give you the full tour. So this house is a craftsman style house. There's stucco on the exterior as well as some wood siding, but you can go up this front porch. This whole street is full of craftsman properties. Some of the porches are open. This one just so happens to be enclosed. Uh, so there are windows here. Now what we plan to do here is making it cozy, tile down the floors, maybe tile some of the walls and just use it as a, a place to take your shoes off and keep your coats. So now let's go into the main house. You'll see there's this nice, beautiful wooden door. This house was built in 1907. So this door is over a hundred years old and it's something that we definitely want to keep. So these floors, they are original hardwood floors, one inch matchstick hardwood flooring. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't go throughout the whole property. So we've got a decision to make. Either keep, refinish these hardwood floors and try to find something that matches it as close as possible. Or uh, what we have right here, some samples of engineered hardwood floors that we can just put throughout the whole property and call it a day. One of the issues currently with the hardwood floors that we have down here is that there are some dark stains which it may not be possible to be sanded out so if we wanted to keep these floors we would probably have to stain it a darker color versus if we went the engineered floors route we can do any color we'd like so <clears throat> in this room alone we do plan to put a electric fireplace in here and retile this old looking fireplace just to look, make it look a lot more modern, a lot more new. Um, these tiles are also original and about 100 years old. As of right now, this has an archway leading into the dining area, but since these ceilings are only eight foot tall, it feels kind of enclosed and this room feels a little bit small. So what we wanna do is open this archway and enlarge it. Okay, we'll bring it back, maybe a foot here and a foot or a foot and a half there to make this opening about seven foot wide and increase the height of this arch, making this area feel a lot more open. <clears throat> now, this property has some good windows and some bad windows. Some of them can be kept and just refinished. Um, and some of them are gonna definitely need to be changed out. So there's a uh, balance there of, of doing what's possible within the budget. If we have the budget for changing out all the windows, it's possible we might, but if not, then we'll definitely keep what's possible to be kept um, just to save a little bit of money. This dining area then leads into the kitchen. Now, this is gonna be one of the biggest projects for this house is that what's trending and what's going to make this house real selling point is this kitchen and 
we did not want the kitchen to be separated from the dining room because I mentioned, you know, the ceiling heights aren't the highest, the living room isn't the biggest. We want to make everything feel as large as possible and this house feel really open. So we want this kitchen to be a selling point and to do that, we're going to remove this wall. Now it is load bearing. We had an engineer and an architect draw up plans in order to remove this. It's going to be a beam across here, as well as a supporting beam across there and another supporting beam across there. So all of these walls are going to be removed and we are going to have an eight foot kitchen peninsula right where this blue tape is. And it'll have an overhang, about a, I think 18 inch overhang with bar stool seating here. So if you can imagine, we're gonna have beautiful kitchen overlooking the dining area and this dining area overlooking the living room area. So it's gonna be extremely massive, extremely wide, and you're gonna be able to entertain with your friends as well as with your family. You know, it's a four bedroom house, so you can imagine all the kids running around and uh, cooking dinner for them. This kitchen is gonna be arranged a little bit. The appliances are gonna be in the same area. However, the fridge was right here where the wall was. We are gonna move the fridge right behind you along this wall. Okay, so it'll be a nice big fridge here. Countertop area, which will extend all the way around and then that peninsula island I was talking about. Okay, so if you can imagine that, it'll look freaking nice. And we're gonna keep these windows as they are, refinish them and paint them. Now, on this level, there's also a hallway bathroom. Okay, so this bathroom right now is eight feet by six foot. It's gonna be completely rearranged. We've got the tub here at the moment and the vanity, but this layout's really not the best. What we're gonna do is right when you walk in, we need this walkway to be open. So we're gonna keep the vanity here, toilet here, and then a large shower stall along the back wall here, okay? So it's gonna be a way better design. Um, now, something to note that we didn't know when we purchased the house was that if we wanted a shower or a tub here, this window height is not compliant for that with the city. So because of that, we have to reconfigure this window. I think raise it, change the style of material so that it's waterproof. I think it'll be like a horizontal style window. We'll see. But it's small things like that that you learn. You know, I didn't know that at all, so I had to learn that when I, uh, spoke with the architect. Now, what I love about this house is that it's the split level and so the bedrooms are separated from that main living space. Okay, so up here you've got two bedrooms on either side of each other. We can hop into one. We're really going to keep this as it is, but as you see there's a lot of freaking light in here, which is a great selling point. Beautiful windows. These are old and, and shitty, but, but we're going to replace them and they're really large. So um, it allows for a lot of natural light. These are the original closets, which I don't really want to do too much to them. We can refinish them, remove these top headers just to make it, you know, one large piece, but in its position as it is right now, they're good closets. Now heading over to this bath bedroom. Again, nice windows overlooking the main street. Not gonna do too much, but we are gonna rearrange these closets. And if you get a sense of them right now, I'll explain that more on the back room in which we're gonna uh, change. So if you look down, this is where the hardwood stops. So this is just plywood right now. And that's one of the factors in which, you know, th that's the decision we have to make if we want to use the wood floors. We'd have to match them all in this section because they stop right there, which is unfortunate. 
I mentioned this house was built in 1908. This section, these two bedrooms, was actually an addition probably around 50 or so years ago. So the house originally, I think, stopped like right here. And all of this was an addition that the previous owners had done. Okay, so this is the primary bedroom. And it's a really, really large bedroom, if you can see. It's got its own bath here. Some wonderful corner windows that overlook the main street, as well as the backyard, which is gonna be awesome when we're finished with it. But what we're gonna be doing here is quite a bit because this bathroom is really, really small. It's only six foot by six foot, and it is not an on the selling point right now, but we're gonna make it into one. So if you see, This closet right here, this closet is about, I think three foot by six foot. Um, but there's also another identical closet right behind this. And so what we're gonna do is enlarge in this bathroom by cutting into both of these closets, making this bathroom six foot wide by 12 foot wide, okay? And so that's gonna be a really, really beautiful bathroom. Now that poses an issue is like, because we're taking closet space here, we're going to need additional closet space for the master bedroom. There is a closet right behind this entry door here. However, it's very, very small and it's not a master closet. But as I mentioned in that previous bedroom, we have multiple closets there that we're actually going to do an exchange. Okay, because those closets are too much for that small bedroom, we're gonna take those closets for this bedroom. So we'll make this closet for the other bedroom and then cut out the closets that that bedroom currently has and make it the master bedroom closet. Okay, so that'll solve the closet issue for this master bedroom. Now, let me show you one final thing and a change that's gonna be made to this bathroom here. This is the fourth bedroom, and as of right now, it's one of my favorite bedrooms because of the natural light that this room gets specifically. And it's, it's probably the second largest bedroom, but it's a little odd shaped. Right now it's very uh, narrow, okay? I think it's about, I think it's about 14 foot long and eight foot wide. Um, which is very narrow for a bedroom. But this bathroom is 12 foot long and six foot wide. Now the thing about bathrooms is that standard tubs come in five foot lengths. So anything over five foot is a little bit of wasted space at the end of the tub. So this bathroom does not need to be six foot wide. It can be five foot wide. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to cut in one foot here to give this bedroom an additional foot in width, which is gonna add about 12 square foot for this bedroom and make this bathroom 12 foot long and five foot wide, which is really standard width for a bathroom, but it's still gonna be a fantastic bathroom for a master bathroom. My bathroom at home is five foot wide and 12 foot long. And so I know exactly what that looks like and is why I'm very, very confident that this bathroom will still be fantastic. All right, and a great selling point. So that is all that's happening up here. There are some other minor changes that we have to do, such as the heating registers on the floors. We have to relocate some of them, et cetera. But that is really the architect that's gonna be designing all of that. We're also gonna rewire the entire property and ch change out electrical panel to a 200 amp panel. But I'm gonna right now take you downstairs where there's a huge value add potential. And this entry location is from the kitchen to the downstairs area. This is another entryway into the side alley that leads into the backyard or the front yard. But if we come down here into the garage level, 
We've got the laundry here, which is not gonna be here anymore. But we also have a massive, about 300 square foot of space in this area. And then if we cut across here, we got a huge garage that can fit about one or two cars maybe if they're staggered. Above us are the bedrooms, so this is the uh, bottom of that split level. If we come back into this room, I mentioned this house is 1,500 square foot, but this room is 300 square foot. So what we're planning to do is convert this into a, another family room, and that's gonna add 300 square foot to the house, making it roughly 1,885 square foot, which is gonna really boost the sales price of this property probably nearly a hundred grand at the end of the day um, based on the comparable sales that we're seeing. What we wanna do, or what we at least have to do, is close up this wall. We'll add in new windows, but foundation will need to be added on the bottom here so that a wall can sit on top of it. In the back here, as of right now, we are planning a third bathroom. You know, I wanted a third bathroom right in this corner. This is a water heater storage, but we're gonna tear this down, make a tankless water heater on the exterior of the property, so it won't take up any space in here. If we have a five foot long, five foot wide bathroom right here, that would also add a lot of additional value to the property. However, that is not yet fully uh, committed on because there is some plumbing that needs to be done and checked out first before we can determine if it's actually viable and cost effective for the flip. Now, we're gonna relocate the laundry back on this other wall here, so the laundry will sit right there. And if we do have the bathroom here, this wall is gonna to need to be shifted over about a foot or two, okay, so that we can create an alley walkway from this living room into the garage. I'm gonna take you to the backyard of the property. We can go through this entrance here. We are gonna be changing out some of the doors for the property. And we've got a large walkway here that's gonna be entirely cleaned up and it's gonna make this house and backyard look a lot bigger than it really is. I mentioned this lot size is about 5,000 square foot. So as you can see, there is plenty of space for activities here for a family of six or so. The concrete here is in relatively good shape, good enough where we don't really have to do anything with it, but all this dirt area is something that we are gonna change. This right now is on a raised level. We tend to demolish it, make it flat, and ideally put just grass all along the back there. We don't have to decorate it too much because we're gonna stage the property. And staging is really gonna do a lot for the uh, selling of this house and transform the space. What we want to do here is just make the space, number one, usable, no hazards with uneven flooring. And I imagine there are people are going to use this place for skateboarding as a kid or having their dog run around. So we just want to make it, you know, very user friendly and not too extravagant. Okay. Uh, we are going to refence this entire back here because this fence is worn and a brand new fence makes a property look really nice. Now, I shared with you everything that's going on in the interior of the house, but there's also another exterior factor that we need to take into account. And number one, it's repainting the entire exterior of the house. But the really big ticket item here that we have to do is the foundation. Okay, so because we're removing that load bearing wall in the kitchen, we also need to upgrade the foundation that is really porous at the moment. It's about a hundred and something year old foundation and it's crumbling. <laughs> and I don't think there's any rebar in it. So at least for the front side of the house, that entire foundation is gonna be redone. It's about 180 linear square foot and some of the posts are gonna be redone in order to support the wall removal that we're doing in the kitchen, okay? So 
that's probably the most expensive item that we're going to have to do on this property. But we've already got quotes on it and we've gotten the engineer drop all the plans. That's what we're waiting on for the city and that's what has been taking quite some time so far. Okay. Thanks so much for watching this tour with me. Now we originally purchased this house for a million dollars and when we purchased it, there were two uh, very good sales comparables for us that we based the sales estimate of this house on, as well as just my experience of being an agent in this city for uh, five years. So I'm, I'm pretty confident where we can get it at and I'm gonna give you a sales estimate right now however i'm gonna have to bleep it out until we put this house on the market so that we can compare it at a later date so we purchased at a million there were two sales comparables that sold right around the corner and i'm expecting to sell this house for and by the time we put this house on the market in the spring, if rates continue to go down, it would be fantastic if we exceed that and get for this house. But I'm excited to see where we land. We still have about five months until this project's completed, but throughout this entire journey, I'm gonna be filming multiple videos just so that you can see the entire process. I'll teach you everything that I learned along the way and you can follow the journey along if this is something that you're interested in. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.